Hello and welcome to tonight's webinar, Recurrence Relations. This webinar is the first of our 2023 BCE General Mathematics Series. My name is Daisy Patsius and I will be your host for this evening. It is with great pleasure that I introduce tonight's presenter, David Tynan. Not only does David have over 30 years of teaching experience, I would say that he is one of the original gurus with regards to incorporating technology into the teaching of mathematics and of course student learning. So you're all in safe hands tonight. That's enough from me. Let's hand over to David because that's who you're here to hear from. Um, hi, David. Uh, hi, yes, I am. I'm ex excited and ready to go. Okay, um, well, good, good evening, everyone. I wanted to just check if you are a teacher, if you're a teacher of further maths and you're interested in how the course in what's now called general maths has changed in recurrence relations and financial mathematics, the answer is not a lot. Um, but um, I thought tonight we would go through a range of um, features um, on the calculator that we can use to help students to understand um, a little bit more about recurrence relations. And apologies if you've seen some of these things, some things are new and some things um, you might have seen before, but I don't want to make that assumption um, that you have seen it. So I'll just go reasonably slowly. We've got about 50 minutes and we'll just try to get through um, what we can. But before we start, I'll just explain um, roughly what we're going to do. So under the heading of recurrence relations, um, we will spend a bit of time about different ways of generating values um, with recursion, including ways of making lists of the values um, from a recurrence rule. The second thing we'll do is work out ways of adding graphs um, to, to um, the analysis that's possible. And the third thing is a visit um, it, over, a, I guess, a few notes pages that have been pre-prepared that will help with some financial applications of recurrence relations. So um, the second thing I wanted to do before we um, go to the calculator um, is to look at what a first order linear recurrence rule is. Now, again, apologies <coughs> to existing further maths teachers. But um, I just thought it would be worth to um, explain a little bit about what a first order li linear recurrence rule um, actually is. So the, the term or, or the phrase first order just means that the um, V of n plus 1 is, is based on a single previous value, the V of n. So there's no V of n minus 1 or V of n minus 2. It's just a single one. That means that it's called a first order recurrence rule. And the linear um, in the phrase first order linear recurrence rule just means that the, the rule for V of n plus 1 is a first order polynomial, a linear polynomial. Um, that doesn't mean it necessarily generates a straight line um, worth of um, values. It just means that the recurrence rule is in that form. Okay, so without further ado, let's go to the calculator. And that's me. And I thought we'd just start with the basics. So let's consider um, an investment in which you um, earn, sorry, put in deposit a thousand dollars. So that's our V naught. And if you just multiply or press the multiplication symbol, it will assume you want the previous answer times 1.07 and we're already doing recursion. So if I press enter, it does um, the value of that investment after the first time period. And if I keep pressing enter, the recursion feature kicks in and it will just generate a set of values um, for each of the changes in the time period. Now that's quite nice. And in fact, 
for many things, that's enough for students to generate values. They hit, there are exam questions and SAC questions that relate to that idea. Um, there are a couple of things that can be done to improve that. And one of the things that you could do is to um, add something that which tells you which time period you're actually in. And so to do that, um, if you just use the set notation, so I'm going to enter in that I mean um, at zero time and the value is a thousand. And then the next step is to um, again use a set or set notation or set brackets. But this time what we're going to do is get more from the previous answer. We're going to get the previous answer element one and the square brackets are used to indicate that. And what we're going to do is increment that by one. So we're going to the next time period, then a comma, and now we're gonna deal with the balance of the account or in this context. And so what we do is say, we want answer element two, and we're gonna multiply that by 1.07. Now, the focus should be on the results. So if I press enter now, that will give me the, um, at, at, uh, it says that after the first time period, the value is 1070 and then the recursion, as well as giving you the balance, will also tell you which time period that it relates to. So that's one enhancement, I guess, of um, just the basic recursion. Um, it's also possible to do a similar thing on a spreadsheet and arguably easier. So I'm just going to refer to, um, I've generated um, a page for, for a spreadsheet um, and you can use it pretty much in the way that you might use Microsoft Excel. So you say, I'm going to equal in this cell. So the two variables that I've got is one called NVAL, which is, um, gives you the current time period, if you like, um, N value, and then um, VAL, which is the, I guess, the, val the balance um, in the account. So um, my first step in the formula is obviously just to say, I want the element in A1, and I'm going to add one to it. So if I just type in a1 plus 1 and enter, it does what I expect. And similarly, if I do um, equals A2, so this one is going to, sorry, is going to reference A, sorry, not A, B1 and multiply it by 1.07. So that's done what the other one uh, did on the calculator page, but the added benefit here is that I can fill that formula down in the same way you might any other spreadsheet. So the way that you do that is you select the two cells that you wish to copy down or fill down, and you've got two options. Um, you can just do control menu and the fill option comes up. But if you don't want to do that, you can also go to menu, data, and fill. That will also work. And it seems to do nothing. But what it's waiting for you to do is to um, select the cells. So I'm pressed the down arrow. And if I do that a number of times, and then when I've done as many cells as I wish, I press the return key. And then you'll see that um, the formula has been filled down there. So that's generated um, 10 values. Um, it also has the reference there, which is good. And that's also useful when it comes to things like adding um, a graph to display it. One of the things that our students <coughs> struggle with a little bit is the visualizing of what's happening. Is it... Um, Will it make a straight line or will it be curved? And so if you insert, which the shortcut is just control I. Um, so um, I'll do that. 
and I'm going to add a data and statistics window. And there's the disorganized data. But if I press the tab key, uh, I'll go down to the bottom one first and put NVAL and then VAL, you'll see that it's giving me a scatter plot of the growth of my $1,000 um, over that time period. So that's quite a nice way to generate data and it's reasonably intuitive. It's probably a little bit fiddly on the students' calculators. It's certainly pretty easy using the teacher software, but um, that's one option that you have um, for, for doing that. And the next thing I'm going to do is to show something that I've played with recently um, for using that general rule for our um, first order linear recurrence rule to, um, to generate a set of values. And the way that I do that is with a program, which I'm going to show you. But then after I show it to you, I'm going to try to do it from scratch. Um, and that's because with programs, um, uh, often uh, teachers and students feel a little bit uncomfortable um, doing it. It's a bit of a bit of a, um, a stretch to the sort of thing they normally do. But I thought it would be good to just run it, run it um, to show you, and then just um, reconstruct it from scratch. So here's how it looks. You'll see that this is, um, so this is one that I prepared earlier, as they say, and it looks complicated, but um, I'm going to try to convince you that it's not um, very complicated. It actually works out to be a very powerful um, method of generating values for any sort of recurrence rule <coughs> that you'll encounter in the general maths um, uh, Currents and finance maths um, section. Okay, so the first thing is um, the name of the program, which I've just called RR vowels because it generates RR vowels. And if you recall, and I'll, I'll jump back so you can see it, if you recall, the general first order linear recurrence rule is V of n plus one is equal to A times V of n plus B. Now, when we teach this, we often use, instead of A, we use capital R. And for B, sometimes we use other letters like <coughs> C or D. It doesn't really matter. The main thing is just the idea that you, this can be used to generate any um, a set of values using any of the recurrence rules that we consider. I'll just go back to the calculator. So that's what that is. So that requires that when you run it, the user enters the A value from the recurrence rule, the B value, a V naught value, and then also to specify how many values they want to generate. Okay, so the program starts and these first two lines, val is equal to, looks like set brackets, set brackets with a blank in it, and nval, which is assigned um, it's basically initializing those variables and making them blank uh, or empty lists and then it's saying okay the first element in nval so nval square brackets one is to be zero and the first actual value that it's going to generate will be v naught where v naught has been specified above and then this is the bit that shows the recursion. So for n equals or n which starts at one and goes up to num vowels minus one in steps of one, assign to n val the next element, the n value, the current n value. So it's it's really just keeping a count of um, which element you're in, which n value you're in. And then the second one is just the general rule that the the value or the V, if you like, V of n plus one is the A value that was given times the previous value 
plus the B value that was specified above. And that will loop and recurse, if you like, um, until it's reached numvals minus one. So the reason for numvals minus one is because we've already assigned something to the first element in the um, list val and nval. And then after you've finished that for loop, your uh, next step is to just to display the variable. So what I'd like to do is to show you it running, and then I'd like to construct it from scratch. Um, hopefully that goes okay. So um, the way that you do it on the calculator to run it is just to do control R, and that takes you to um, a calculator page. And I'm going to choose an example, which is just an arithmetic sequence using recurrence. And the rule that I'm going to do is that V of N plus one is just V of N minus three. And we'll start with a V naught of seven and we'll just get five terms. So in a case like that, I want the A value to be one. I want the B value to be minus three. I want the V naught to be seven and I want to generate five values. And there it is. So I'll, for comparison's sake, I'm going to do a geometric sequence using the recurrence rule. And so um, I'll type in RR vowels, or I could have just copied the previous one and edited it. And I'm going to do um, an A value of 1.07 and a B value, which is zero. And the V naught is going to be a thousand. And I think you can see where this is going and I generate five terms. And so that is generating the same set of values that we did in the introductory example. And the final example is for one such as an annuity or a loan. And um, I'm going to do RR vowels and we're going to make a scenario where it's um, 1.03 for the A value the B value will be minus a thousand. So this is, let's say this is an annuity and the original amount might be 500,000 and we want to generate just three terms, say. And sh that shows you what will happen. It's a pretty good scenario. I think that one's going to keep, keep increasing in value. So the reason for showing the three um examples is to show to highlight that it's it's really good enough as a program to handle any of the the standard or um or the range of recurrence rules that we study and my feeling is that if students use something like that they might be more likely to see um that the arithmetic, the geometric loans and annuities are really just particular cases of the same general um, recurrence rule that, that we um, study. Okay, now for the exciting bit. To, to, I wanted to model just generating this from scratch. And so I'm going to just make a new document and in order to add the program, I'm going to add program editor new. And the name that I'm going to give it is, I'm going to call it something different, triple R vowels, don't know why, but just so it's different. And then it is a program. Um, there are things you can do which are functions, but we'll make ours a program. And we won't worry about library access at this stage. So this is what it generates. It generates a, um, a page with the um, uh, define um, the program name. And it also has double the brackets there so that you can enter 
any things that you're going to pass to the programs, such as the A, the B, the V naught, and the num vowels. So um, I'll try to go reasonably quickly, but if I say A comma B comma V naught is the variable and for the first value and num vowels. And that's all I write there. And then my next step is the initial step or the initializing step. And that is to say, okay, the first, the, the list of values will be initially blank. And so I use the squiggly brackets to, to indicate that it's a list and it's initially blank. Now, just for um, benefit of getting it all visible on one screen, I use a colon and that separates the commands. And then if you recall, the nval um, list variable also needs to be initialized so that it's empty. And now we have the first line of the program completed. And then the next command is to say, right, we want um, the first value of the n, um, number one, we want that to be zero. So for zero time or zero time periods. Now we put a colon again to separate this command from the next one and val one, the first <coughs> element in the value list will be v naught. So we're going to assign um, val one um, the value of v naught. Okay, so far so good. And now we're gonna put in a for loop and so to do that, um, you, you can just type for, but there is a, a template thing here. So if you pressed menu, there's a for n4 option under the control menu. So, and this is saying, okay, what do you want to do with the for? I want, I want this to be based on the ver variable n and I want n to go from one all the way up to num vowels minus one. We don't want it to go to num vowels because we've already assigned one value. Otherwise it'll generate an incorrect number of values. And we want it to increment n in one. And then we press enter. And so now we've got to do our, our if you like, our, our commands that we would like to be um, recursed. So n val, of the next one, n plus one, will be assigned the current value of n. <clears throat> and then here's our general recurrence rule. The val next, if you like, or val of n plus one, um, will be assigned a times the previous val plus the user entered B value. And that's the end of the for loop. I'll just get rid of that line and then I'll get outside the for loop. And the only thing that remains to do is to display the results. And so I can disp um, Sorry, I, I just typed this, but you can get that from the menu and it's in the IO options, um, disp. So we're going to display um, just the, the variable called val. And that is a completed program successfully done. So um, I thought it was worth recording it and just to double check that it works, um, I'll, I'll do another example. I'll just do a previous example. So A is one comma minus three comma V naught is seven. And let's just generate another five values. And so it works. Now there's an extra benefit in this 
and that is that you've generated a list um, of the n values and their associated um, uh, sequence values from the recurrence rule. And so it is possible now if you typed, oh, sorry, if you clicked on the var button, you can see that nval and val are both there. So if I did nval, that should show me the values that have been generated for n or nval. And if I press var again and go to val, this should give me my the same list as we got before. But the nice part of having the nval there is that you have the ability to just generate the scatter plot again. So without spending too long on this, if I just inserted a page and went to data and statistics, I could do the same thing that I did before. So nval tab uh, val, and then you see how that sequence. So it's fairly easy. And uh, my feeling is that you the simplest thing to do is just to save that um, just just call it rr val or whatever it is and just so you're clear in what's happening we're saving a file um, or the students are generating it and saving that file but while they're inside this file they are able to um, run the rr vals or rr triple R valves or something like that. <clears throat> and it just works. So um, I just thought that was useful to do. Now, back to recursion. Here's the one that we prepared earlier. And I wanted to show an extra element, which um, I recently discovered or recently tried to get working. And this is a split window. So it's, it's in the same file that the rrvals program is but the top half of the screen is a notes page and in the notes page you can sort of pretty it up a little bit so this first bit here is just saying what it's about and this seems a bit strange um, to me when i first saw it but this command here it's a maths box for those that haven't used maths box and the notes pages allow you to do live maths as well as just type and um, use as a word processor so this is running the rr vowels and you can see it has the same parameters there um, that we defined in the program and with that defined inside the notes page I can make changes um, to this. So um, if I um, type in particular values um, for the A and the B and, and, and V naught and all that, it will make a change to those, um, uh, to, the, to the values. So um, I just thought that was a useful thing. And um, in this file, like all the files that you see tonight, They'll all be available um, at some point in the not too distant future for you to have a bit of a play with if you're interested in that sort of thing. Okay, so um, that's sort of it for that generating of data and generating of um, associated graphs um, with the data. Now we're going to have a little look at um, using notes pages a little bit more for financial applications and again it's using recurrence rules so i'm going to go to the first one which is um, for arithmetic sequence or i've called them linear but um, arithmetic sequences and um, i'll just show you an example you'll notice that i do a little bit of this splitting of the window so the one that you see there is it's actually a notes page on the top so that I can get a nice, pretty clear sort of title. But then the rest of the window is for just normal calculations. That's a calculation page. Okay, so let's move on to the, to the options proper. So the, an application um, for um, our recurrence rules. Now, sorry, I should probably point out that in this file, I've gone with the more conventional further maths, or sorry, general maths, I have to get used to that, 
um, general maths practice of using D um, for a common difference. Um, and uh, this notes page is allowing you to generate values in a similar way to the program, but I'll just explain the difference. So um, I've defined in a maths box a variable called V0, and V0 um, is currently assigned the value 20. So just for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to change that to 10. And um, and I'm going to change the D value to um, minus 2. OK, now you will have noticed that a number of things underneath um, were updated, and that's because they're dependent on these values. So the first thing um, that is generated is that um, the recurrence rule associated with that one. So V of n plus 1 is V of n plus minus 2 and the V naught. So it's generating the recurrence rule based on the V naught and the D value that you've got. It's not such a stretch, but it's it's just displaying it in the two forms. One of the things I find teaching, I have two classes of year 12 further, is that with recurrence rules, it's really important that the students can work out um, how to go from a, a recurrence rule to the associated direct rule. And some of them are good at remembering and working it out and others aren't. Um, this also will generate the direct rule. So with the V naught and the D having been entered, um, you'll notice that output stuff is typically, I've designed it to be in green. And so you'll notice that it gives you a direct rule here and it's just inheriting the value. You notice it just says V naught there. And if I click in here, it tells me that's the D value. Now, it's probably worth showing it is the D value, but it's not showing the D when, when I click away. And the reason for that is, apologies if you know this, is that with these math box, if you press control menu and look at the attributes of your math box, you can select to hide the input um, or the output or to show them both. Um, and that's why that's not showing up. So I'll just get out of there. So as soon as you click away, it disappears because the input is being selected to be hidden in the attributes. Now, it also, um, on this page shows that you can enter a particular value. So I'm going to enter the number five and it updates and says, right, V of five. Now you might think, well, why do you need a notes page for this? Um, and that's an excellent point. And um, I guess um, I might talk about that a little bit later. The first five terms can be generated. And this is... Um, uh, a little program. Well, it's actually a sequence command. So it's a bit of a, a trick. What it's doing is it's generating a sequence of values, basically using the direct rule and the, um, the uh, going and based on the variable n and going from naught to four. Okay. And if you click away, you only see the values. And then finally, um, this will also tell you, okay, I want to know when is the value 100. Um, so if I click on, um, doesn't really make sense in that case. So when is it um, minus 50? And that tells me that um, there will be 30 terms needed in order to do that. So the reason for labouring over that is to show the ins and outs of this notes page, but that's mirrored in a lot of the other pages that we will um, look at. So um, if I go to 2.1, um, I probably should say something about, this is on simple interest, probably should say something about why I go from 1.2 to 2.1. 
So you'll notice in this that V naught is here again, and D is here again, and N is here again, but I don't want them to be the same V naught and D and N as was in 1.2. And the way that you do that is to say that you want a new problem. So um, there's a couple of ways to do that, but you can do, I'm sorry, that's not the right way to do it. You can insert a new problem and new problem basically says it wipes any existing definitions in terms of this page that so that you can define them separately and so that's why it starts at 2.1 for this next section okay so this is not too much of a stretch from um, uh, the previous one it's just that the application that's being used is for simple interest and so there is a rate, um, a percentage rate, a little r value, and you can calculate or it calculates the d value based on the r. Um, and then again, the recurrence rule can be generated and the um, you can find particular values, but it's in, in many ways, it's quite similar to the previous um, page. So that's for simple interest. And then the next one, 3.1, is for flat rate depreciation. And um, you, it's, it's not too different again. It's just that the, the, um, the recurrence rule will have a negative in it because you're subtracting or that the D value will be negative. Um, the way it's been set up, it's just subtracting a positive d um, but it's a similar effect and again you can generate a set of values and you can do a solve so this is essentially a solve command here so down the bottom the number of years for the value to equal a thousand that's really just doing a solve command and the approx is just to force it to give a decimal answer so that's one way to do it um, the other way that you can do it <clears throat> that's probably worth showing this is that um, for the hang on a sec for any maths box you can specify its precision so the maths box attributes there has been set to fix three but you can make any maths box have its own individual um, display precision okay that's enough of that Okay, so that's the uh, linear one. And then you can use a similar idea to create a notes template for unit cost depreciation. Um, and the D value is still there, but um, the, the definition is based on um, the initial value and the final value, um, if that's known. And Again, similar formulas will allow you to, to, to do substitution and solving. So that's that, and I think that might be the end of the linear ones. Okay, so I'll go to the geometric ones, a little bit different. So initially, just the title and a calculation page for some um, work that you might be doing. And so this is a similar one for um, recurrence models for geometric growth. And so um, if you know the um, little r value and the v naught, and you, unfortunately on this technology, you can't, you can't, it doesn't recognize differences in case. You can type them in. So you'll notice that you see the big R here, but in terms of calculation, it doesn't distinguish between a little, a lowercase r and an uppercase r. And so I've just used a variable name called big R um, in, to, to construct that. Okay, so no major surprises there. Again, the recurrence rule can be constructed from the given values and the direct rule can be constructed. And again, substitution of a particular N value into um, 
the well into the direct rule and also generating a set of values and also solving um, and it's a similar thing that's being done there all of these things are constructed and I probably should say that there's a mixture of maths boxes and non maths boxes and what was quite fiddly and I would only ever do this on teacher software is to generate um, is to is to use that to get the size right um, the colors right and the layout so this is just straight text here and then this is not this is generating a sequence so it's a maths box and the idea is to make it so that as much as possible you could fit it on the one calculator page um, and you'll see here I'm using the teacher software I'm able to change the fonts size color all of that and I think you would only realistically do that um, with the computer version of the TI Inspire okay so that's that um, comparing linear uh, and geometric growth is a little bit different so this is a visual um, uh, thing for students to see um, the difference between geometric growth and linear growth and it has some sliders in it and in the sliders you can see that you're you're able to change the the value of the rate the, the r value for the compounding case or geometric growth case and you can also change the the d value um, for the linear case and so that's quite a useful thing for comparing um, how those things now what is it based on um, it's a little bit tricky but essentially um, there are a formula here um, which you can sort of see down the bottom of the screen um, for the time or yeah, the time period and that's a sequence of values um, with nval in it and then there's a formula for the linear growth or the linear values and that's just using the direct rule for linear and or arithmetic and then this is the similar thing for geometric so the good thing about naming them in, as variables is that you can um, you can change some of the key parameters and these are inheriting if if not change these are inheriting values um, uh, that have been just just used with the slider okay so you can wait welcome to have a play with that okay so we'll move on to the next one which is just compound interest and really this is just similar to the geometric growth one but just focusing on compounding period with the added benefit that you can change the number of compounding periods per year so you'll see there that that's um, allowing you to put in a k um, some people call that n I don't really like using n so I just tell the kids that it's k for compounding or, or number of compounding periods in a year and they seem quite happy with that and so again it generates the recurrence rule the direct rule and then similarly will allow you to solve uh, sorry substitute solve and generate a set of points a set of values okay so that's compound interest and then reducing balance depreciation is another application and you can see there that if you know the little r value the big r value can be generated by using one minus little r over 100 and then that can be fed into the recurrence rule and the direct rule and again substitution and solving is possible okay moving on how many minutes have we got probably only five okay that's fine so comparing investments is that um, nominal and effective interest um, idea and so um, this is a comparison of investments so if you see option a b and c the user the student the teacher can type in um, the v naught values which are all 15,000 in this case here 
and then some different rates and different numbers of compounding periods per year. And then the, the effect of those can be seen. And finally, in the geometric thing is this idea of the nominal versus effective rates um, of what is the effective rate if you compound more frequently. And so this calculates it for um, annual, quarterly, monthly, um, fortnightly, weekly, and uh, daily. And then a check with the inbuilt um, EFF command. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to show you in the last five minutes is this idea of reducing balance loans. So there's two things I want to show you. So there's this, which again, <coughs> excuse me, is a combination of a notes page, which is on the left. So it's been split, so the note page is on the left. And then on the right is a graph or, or two graphs that um, show how the balance changes over time for various scenarios. So for example, I could change, um, I think if I change the four back to a six, it, they will be identical. But I might say, well, what if I wanted to pay $800 is my regular premium? What difference will that make? Um, and you'll notice that the last line of the blue on text on the left and the pink text on the left, there is a calculation there for um, the approximate time um, in years to complete the loan. So the idea is that the students can visualize um, the effect. You'll notice there's a little glitch that it looks like you keep paying even after you've paid it off. And that's because I couldn't quite get that bit easily displayed. Um, the rules for these are actually inbuilt functions. So I'm just going to quickly show you the pink one. It's very hard to see, sorry, in this, but I'll just, yeah. So it's using an inbuilt financial command called balance. And it's taking the parameters that on the left um, for uh, the PPY and the CPY and the payment and um, the I, uh, the interest rate. Um, so you can have a look at that if you would like. And the final thing is to show um, something which also uses recursion, but is probably too painful to look at. And that is the Amort Loan Program. So the Amort Loan Program you might have heard of does um, this idea. So it prompts the user to enter the key parameters. 100,000, I'm just going to say 3.5%. And I only want to show six payments, please. And I want that payment to be $800. And there are 12 payments in a year. And the compounding period is, there's 12 compounding periods per year. So what that does is it generates basically the amortization table. So the key parameters are at the top and then it mimics. So it, those teachers of further maths would recognize that we often ask students to um, generate some of the elements in a table like this. And um, I'll finish with an, another run of that program to show a final feature. And that is, if I did the same scenario, uh, 10,000, 100,000, and the rate of 3.5%, and I want to show, I'm just going to say 200 payments, and um, I'm going to pay $1,500, and that's still the same. And then what the program recognizes is that you will have zeroed, you will have amorted or killed the loan. And it says, would you like to make the adjustment to the final payment? And if you say yes, it will do the following. And that is, you'll see here that you end up um, in a, a different position at the end in which really they owe you money. So there's um, an adjustment that can be made so that the final payment is not 
1500 but 362 dollars and that incorporates the interest for the last month in this context and i think that is 50 minutes so um again um thank you for um watching and listening and all the files that i have shown tonight i will um will, will be sent will be available and will be sent to the people who've um, logged on to the webinar is a special treat, I hope. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> and good night. Thanks very much, David. Another Hello. wonderful session that you've delivered. Thank you very much. Um, in the next couple of days, you will receive an email containing a link to tonight's recording, just in case you want to go over a few things. And as David said, uh, access to his files and a link to your PD certificate. So we do hope that you enjoyed this evening. Uh, we thank you once again, and perhaps you're up for seeing the next webinar in, this, in the general math series, Leslie Matrices, which is on the 6th of September. So thanks again for joining. Thanks again to David and have a lovely evening, everybody, and see you next time. See you, everyone. Thanks, Daisy. Thank you, bye.